There are a couple of little, uh, a couple of cartoons that uh, I have that uh, uh, part of the Peanuts cartoon. I don't know how many of you read Peanuts or read the uh, read the comic pages in the newspaper. I, I read the comic pages a lot of times, and I find that sometimes there's better commentary in the comic pages uh, than there is in some of the rest of the paper. And uh, this particular uh, Peanuts cartoon that I have here uh, shows uh, Linus and Charlie Brown, and Linus is saying. And then on Halloween night, the great pumpkin rises out of the pumpkin patch. And he brings toys to all the good little children in the world. Charlie Brown looks at him and he says, you're crazy. And Linus says, all right, so you believe in Santa Claus and I'll believe in the great pumpkin. The way I see it, it doesn't matter what you believe, just so you're sincere. Well, then the next day they had the rest of the story. And... Uh, shows this picture of Linus, and he's got this droopy expression on his face. And Charlie Brown and Lucy are standing over there, and Charlie Brown and Lucy are making fun of Linus. And Charlie Brown is saying, look at me, I'm the great pumpkin. I rise out of the, up out of the pumpkin patch and bring toys to all the little children on Halloween. And they're laughing, ha, ha, ha. He says, hey, Linus, how many toys did he bring you? The next panel shows Linus sitting down here on the sidewalk, and he's looking all sad and forlorn. And he says, I was a victim of false doctrine. <laughs> Does it matter what you believe just so long as you're sincere? The people in Waco were sincere. And it did matter what they believed. You know, Linus was a victim of false doctrine. The only thing he was was disappointed, uh, you know, on November the 1st. Uh, but there have been people who have experienced tragic consequences because they were sincere, but they were sincerely wrong. It does matter what we believe. It's not enough just to be sincere. Uh, we can be, as uh, Linus was, a victim of false doctrine. The people in Waco were the victims of false doctrine. People in Jonestown were the victims of false doctrine. They were sincere, but they were wrong. They were sincerely wrong. You see, it's important that we be sincere. I'm not detracting from sincerity at all. It's very important that we be sincere. But it's important that we be sincerely right. That's why we're told, as we emphasized, uh, by, I, I know I gave a sermon back during the time of the Days of Unleavened Bread, focusing in in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that we are to take in of the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I think I quoted the scripture in Joshua on the last day of unleavened bread where Joshua called upon the children of Israel to worship God in sincerity and truth. And truth. What is the ultimate criteria of truth? You see, the problem with the cult is they didn't know the ultimate criteria of truth. To the people in Waco, David Koresh was the ultimate arbiter of truth. Truth was what David Koresh said it was. For the people in Jonestown, truth was what Jim Jones said it was. Truth was based on what one person said. Jesus said in John chapter 17, 17, speaking of his followers, sanctify them, this is in the form of a prayer to God, and he says, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Our source of truth is the word of God. Isaiah 8.20 says, If they speak not according to the law and to the testimony, it's because there's no truth in them. It's because there's no truth in them. The Apostle John, the Apostle John uh, emphasized back in his writings, uh, some of these, uh, uh, some of these very things, when uh, uh, 
when he talked about uh, uh, the things that we are to uh, uh, to look at, and he gave warning, and uh, uh, he emphasized uh, in First uh, John, he emphasized, he said, "Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits." whether they are of God. The, uh, so the emphasis that John said was not simply to believe every spirit, but to try the spirits. This is in 1 John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, the... Uh, he goes right on and gives the test. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now, if you just read that here, well, a lot of people say that Jesus Christ came. Is that all that means? You know, everybody from Catholics to Mormons to Jehovah's Witnesses to uh, Jim Jones to whomever. You know, virtually everybody uh, that even professes even remotely the name Christian, claims that, yeah, Jesus Christ came. Well, if you really check it out here, you find that the term that is used here, the, there is a particular tense of the, of the verb uh, that's translated is come. And the, uh, uh, the point of it is that it, it, the, the tense of the verb denotes continuing action. Continuing action. Action with, with ongoing results. In other words, the spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming into our flesh, that's the point. Jesus Christ must live his life in us. See, we're told in Galatians, Paul says, you know, in Galatians 2.20, uh, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. See, it comes right on down in verse 4 of John, uh, of 1 John 4. It says, um, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming continues to come into the flesh, into our flesh, into our to live in us, dwell in us through the power of the Spirit. That's why greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're told to believe not every spirit, to try the spirits. You see, Jesus Christ will live the same kind of life in us that he lived when he walked the earth almost 2,000 years ago. The criteria of truth is that it is spoken according to the law and to the testimony. In other words, it agrees with the Bible. John 17, 17 says, Thy word is truth. Isaiah eight twenty says, To the law and to the testimony, which is a reference to the entirety of the Bible. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Believe not every spirit, try the spirits. You see, the criteria is, the criteria of truth is to follow what God says in the Bible. Our way of life is based on principles that come out of the Bible. It's not based on one man or one man's interpretation. It is based on what God says. The Apostle Paul told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. There are many people who think that, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. Well, there are people who have been sincere and have been sincerely wrong. The tragedy of the people in Waco is they were very sincere. 
If they hadn't been sincere, they wouldn't have stayed in there and burned up. They were sincere. The people in Jonestown back a number of years ago, it's been, uh, oh my, uh, almost, it's been like 14 years ago, something like that, over 14 years ago, or 15. They were very sincere. But their sincerity cost them their life. Because their sincerity was based on the wrong thing. They were sincerely wrong. It's not enough to be sincere. You know, Linus said he was the victim of false doctrine. Well, all it cost him was a little bit of disappointment. The people in Waco, the people in in, uh, Jonestown were victims of false doctrine. And in reality, the whole world is the victim of false doctrine. You can read about that in the book of Revelation, chapter 17. We don't have to be. You know, it's, we need to understand that although a lot of accusations can be labeled and, and uh, leveled at God's people, we've been called a sect and a cult and all sorts of things, and that's not new. The Apostle Paul was called those things, and Christ was called those things. Uh, it's not the label that the world hangs on us, but we must always remember to always place, princi- to always place principles above personalities. The principles that originate from God. The principles that are the basis of truth. And if we always remember to prove all things, to hold fast what's good, to try the spirits, that God's word is truth, then we have the basis of principles by which everything and everyone can be evaluated. And we will never find ourselves in the disappointed position of Linus, and certainly, even more importantly, never find ourselves in the tragic circumstances of the people in Waco.